Well, at MC10, what we're trying to do is reshape electronics to um, really blur the boundaries between technology and people. So if Internet of Things is a broad topic, we're really focused on connectivity with people and trying to seamlessly integrate um, computing so that it becomes really totally integrated with the body. And that has benefits in sports and fitness, proactively getting information that can help you optimize your performance or reduce the risk of injury. And it also has great implications in healthcare because a lot of the ability to use um, devices, medical devices, smartphones, wearables, has been limited by the fact that the form factor of electronics is not very conducive to soft tissue on the skin or even inside the body. So um, I think the ability to proactively understand what's happening as we live our daily lives has uh, potentially very big impact in solving a range of different problems. So wearables are a thing. Yours are more like invisibles. Well, we're trying to, um, we're trying to um, overcome the challenge of comfort and fit. Um, there was a recent Nielsen study that said for people that have adopted about 4,000 users of first generation wearables cited two challenges. Um, one was cost and the other is wearability, comfort and fit. And at MC10, we're trying to um, really attack that problem by making uh, wearables that are you know, virtually invisible to the user. Um, our first product is something we developed in conjunction with Reebok called the Check Light. Um, actually, we were recognized by um, CES as an innovation award winner at this year's show for health and fitness. And what the Check Light does is it's a sensor that's conformal to the head, um, and it detects the blow during contact sports. And it's not, a, it's not a diagnostic tool for concussions, per se, but it acts as an extra set of eyes on the field for uh, student athletes and gives some peace of mind to their family. It gives them an indication when they need to be checked out for, um, you know, for a potential concussion. And it's really um, being able to integrate electronics in, in tight coupling with the head underneath the helmet, so having the comfort and fit, um, having really simple insight that's delivered back to the user, um, removing the burden of self-reporting, um, you know, have, having to rely on us as individuals to kind of remember how we feel or describe it, or you know, if we can instead use the power of, of sensing and computing to do that, we can be much more proactive in being able to take steps when something serious has happened and um, conversely, avoiding, you know, sort of running into the emergency room for something more benign. Wow. I think it's also important to think about the benefits of being connected. And the first phase is collecting lots of information and having you know, a connection in one direction where that can be analyzed and you can you know, make some decisions based on it. But I think the really exciting part is when you end up closing the loop and you can provide you know, feedback or an insight you know, back to a consumer or a patient or you know, think about a, a medical device that's um, collecting information with very high sensitivity. It's doing some computation. Maybe that computation happens in the cloud where you're being compared to other patients that have similar conditions. And then you can tailor the therapy, really deliver personalized medicine in a very specific way based on real information. And that can, help, that can happen with you know, industrial machines or planes or automobiles as well. So being able to um, take the benefit of connectivity and make it bi-directional um, so that you are closing the loop and having um, a more automated proactive system that makes things more efficient. 